This morning, metals are staging a small comeback after last week's commodity sell-off erased a nearly $99 billion of market value. Last week, gold dropped more than 4 percent. Silver dropped 27 percent, its worst streak since 1975. John Burbank runs the $4.6 billion Passport Capital Hedge Fund. His decision to trim some of his massive gold holdings it caught the attention of investors around the world. And he joins us now live from our London offices. It's great to have you back on the show, John. Um, you got a lot of attention Thanks, for this decision last week. Uh, are you exiting the gold market or are you just trimming holdings? So we've actually uh, hedged ourselves across all commodities. We're invested in many different commodity uh, equities, uh, including energy-based uh, materials, gold, and agriculture. And we feel that the repositioning uh, uh, of investors um, uh, looking at the end of QE2 is responsible for risk coming off. And gold is one of those things um, that investors bought uh, you know, to, to, to not be devalued against the dollar. The dollar is getting stronger against the euro. Um, so we just think this is a temporary correction. Gold also typically bottoms seasonally in August. So I can imagine gold not being very strong until then. So you're still a long-term gold bull, but this is a temporary pause for you? Yeah, unfortunately, um, unfortunately we're having to uh, watch uh, the feds and governments around the world, whether it's China, the U.S., or Europe, uh, and then follow. I call it like it's uh, we're watching the last table of the World Series, series of poker, you know, all <laughs> these uh, huge players with huge amounts of chips, and we have to play according to how they're playing or how we perceive them to be playing. I think the Fed is going to end QE2. Then it's going to see what happens. I think risk assets sell off. I think they sell off now into it. Um, and I think we bottom again in commodities this summer. At least that's my belief. I think the better bet is to be cautious um, and, uh, and just to have some perspective about where things traded when QE2 uh, uh, started. You know, gold was, uh, was uh, 1350. Um, you know, the S&P was 1,200. Oil was 85. This is all the beginning of November. Um, silver was 25. Mm -hmm. So I'm not predicting that they're going to go back to those levels. They may go below. They may stay above. But the better bet, unless there's some other kind of liquidity coming from governments, is that they trend back towards those levels. So uh, what is it that you're imagining happens at the end of June with the end of QE2? Are we talking about credit freezing up again? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, you know, markets, uh, markets, and, and credits that's been provided to markets have done very well. In fact, the the the, the oddity of all this is that uh, likely uh, sovereign U.S. yields are going to are going to uh, tighten. Um, you know, the the ten year the U.S. ten year was trading around two sixty one at the beginning of November. Um, you know, there's a long way to go down actually uh, to to get back there. I think that long term is different than the short term. Short term um, risk aversion will lead more money into the dollar probably and into uh, sovereign uh, 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 bonds. Um, but long term is a different story. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you're not just talking about gold here. You're saying the risk bets are coming off in the near term. We're looking at hedge fund bets at, at you know record highs in terms of uh, hedge funds uh, placing bullish bets on outlook. Are, are you also pulling back on some of those other commodity bets you have? I know you, you long-term believe in resource scarcity. Absolutely. So the long-term is different than the short-term, and particularly for hedge funds. Hedge funds need to, to make money uh, on a near-term basis, uh, just like uh, mutual funds need to try to keep up with uh, their benchmarks. Um, but the thing is, the Fed, uh, by doing what it did with, with quantitative easing, uh, forced a repositioning uh, almost unwillingly by many investors to make inflationary bets, uh, as well as to avoid being devalued as the dollar fell and fell and fell. So now I think you have um, you know, a, a, a reversion um, uh, to that trade, uh, and then things settle out, and then we'll see what's strong and what's weak. I think long term, it's clear, to, it's clear that sovereign yields are going to be weak and commodities are going to be strong. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a question of when do we get there, when do markets price that in. Now, back in 2009, you told some of your investors that, that you were expecting central banks to become more of a player in the gold market and start amassing holdings. I mean, we've seen some of that thesis play out. How has that, that changed the trade? Absolutely. So the biggest, the biggest reason to stay in gold is because central banks around the world 
can see the writing on the wall here long term, which is the dollar is going to be de devalued one way or another, and that Congress has no appetite for hard decisions, which would be deflationary in nature, um, and therefore um, make gold not as uh, make the dollar higher and make gold not as much of a, of a, of a necessary holding. You also have the Chinese consumer, who's mm -hmm. become a very large buyer, um, uh, matching uh, almost the uh, the Indian consumer, and and I think quite clearly. Uh, is going to exceed the Indian consumer. I think ultimately physical gold is the story, and it is a scarcity story. And the more the U.S. Uh, you know, dithers, and uh, the more the Fed is willing to print money, as opposed to uh, as to just deal with inflation properly, um, the more uh, this trend is going to happen. So that's the biggest reason to stay in gold right now. Um, otherwise, I would say that most of the the beneficiaries of quantitative easing. Um, are going to be um, um, backing off, I'd say, as uh, most investors get back to neutral. So this is a, a short-term position for you, but what would make you re-enter beyond the, the timetable here? I mean, and are you looking at entering back into physical gold, the GLD, the ETF? I mean, you had at one point held a stake in, in Barrick as well. And the equity side is there is there interest? Well, um, our preference um, are actually two two areas. One is physical gold. Um, the other are smaller cap uh, junior miners. Um, we have two geologists uh, based in Vancouver. Uh, we feel we have a big edge on uh, an understanding uh, which gold miners, uh, which explorers, are the are the right ones to own. And so we are interested and are buying um, uh, even now, and will continue to be to accumulate stakes there. Barrick uh, and Newmont have already come off, you know, ten, at least 10 percent uh, just in the last couple of weeks. I think that the gold stocks are discounting a further fall in gold, and we don't know if it's going to happen. I th I'd say that if there was another government uh, action or intervention mm -hmm. that provided a lot of liquidity in the world, then I think we would be uh, quicker to, uh, what would that you know, be? to come back in. Well, you know, J Japan, uh, you know, after the earthquake, Japan put a lot of liquidity into the market, uh, which I think held up risk assets longer than they, they would have. Mm. Um, you know, Europe is facing its issues uh, with Greece, Portugal, et cetera. You know, we don't know uh, to what degree they may change their posture. Uh, you know, the euro is coming off of the, the belief that uh, uh, there's probably going to be some change in stance by the uh, central bank as well as potentially uh, the, ECB, the, the uh, euro community. Yeah. Um, we don't know. I, also, the end of QE2 is so um, heavily understood right. uh, and that it's going to happen, but not understood about what's going to happen after that. Yeah. It is It is possible the Fed's got something up its sleeve um, because it knows that risk assets are going to be selling off on the end of this. At least I hope it knows that. John, thanks so much for making time for us. Great talking to you.